Hello and welcome to airgunweb.com and our series called Take Aim. Now I'm sure we've all been there. We're out in the field, got our game on our sights, and we start thinking about distance and pellet drop. Pretty soon the game smells a smoke from our brain overheating, trying to remember was it half an inch over or one inch under. By the time we have it figured out, the shot's either long gone or worse, we've pulled the trigger and missed. So today we're going to try and tackle this problem using a chronograph and Hawk's Chairgun Pro PC software. It's going to be all theory work in this episode, so get your pen and paper ready as we tackle shooting flat with proper scope optimization. In order for this to work, you're going to need good data about your air gun, and that starts with a good chronograph. Now, I've used several over the years, and one of my favorites is the Pro Chrono Digital from Competition Electronics. It works great right out of the box but you can also add some really cool accessories if the need arises. For example, they have IR sky screens for indoor shooting and a package for downloading your crony data into the proprietary software. This is great if you're a numbers nut like I am. The next thing you'll need is a PC or Mac capable of running Hawk's Chairgun Pro software. We're not going to get in depth on how to run it today, it would take way too long. But if you take your time, you can find your way around the software. For this exercise, I'm going to use the Hotson AT44S and 22 caliber. This rifle has been on the market in one variation or another for many years. It's very accurate and predictable, which makes it a great fit for this project. Rather than mounting a high-tech mill dot scope, I'm going to make this really a challenge and mount a Hawk 3-9x50 Sport HD scope with a duplex reticle. The whole point of going through all this is to make things as foolproof as possible when the shot really counts and you don't get much simpler than a good old duplex reticle. Next comes the fun part. We need to plug in all our data into Chairgun Pro and start filling with our optimal zero point. Let's take a look at how this works. The first thing we're going to do is select our caliber of air gun. For this experiment, I'm using a 22 caliber AT44, so I'll click 22 caliber air gun. Next, we need to select our pellet, so I'll click on the text that starts with pellet and it will pull up a list of options. Now hopefully the pellet you're using is listed here. In this case, I'm using the JSB Exact 15.9 green pellet, so I'm good to go. Next, I'll enter my average muzzle velocity of 944 feet per second and set my zero range at 10 yards for now. For my scope height, I'll measure the center of my scope to the bore of my rifle. Now in this case, it's two inches. Here's what I'll use for the rest of the settings. For mag, I leave this alone or set it to the max on my scope. Laser height, I leave it alone. Laser zero, leave it alone. Incline, I'll go ahead and set that to zero. I'll set my start range to zero and my end range to 100. My kill zone is going to be one inch. Now the energy will be automatically calculated. I'll leave the click MOA alone and I'll leave the wind speed and wind angle alone. At this point, I'm about ready to get some usable data for setting my optimal zero. Take a look at the graph on the bottom of the page. Notice the shot curve as well as the two purple lines above and below the aim point. The two purple lines represent the top and bottom extremes of my one inch kill zone. The blue shot trajectory arches wildly with a near zero at 10 yards and a far zero at about 78 yards. If I left my scope zeroed at 10 yards, I would have to do some serious hold over and hold under adjustments to hit my targets and I'd only be in my one inch kill zone for a very narrow window around those zero points. But look what happens if I change my zero range to 15 yards. My shot curve begins to flatten out. Now I'll increase that zero range by one yard increments until I reach my optimal trajectory curve. In this case, I hit my optimal curve at about 19 yards. Now zero at 19 yards, I should be able to put the crosshairs on the center mass of my target and hit within a 1 inch kill zone from 12.7 yards out to 50 yards. If this works, there's no need to worry about hold over or hold under, as anything in my effective range would be a kill shot just by putting the crosshairs on the target. Here's one more trick that I use to set up in the shop and know that I'm going to be pretty close when I go to fine tune things in the field. Take a look at the chart and make note of the pellet impact at 10 yards. Given our current settings, it reads minus 0.75 inches. That means at 10 yards, my point of impact is 3 quarters of an inch low. If I take and mark my target at 3 quarters of an inch below the bullseye, 
I can aim dead center of the target and adjust my point of impact according to that lower mark. Once I'm hitting consistently on that three quarters of an inch low mark, I know that I'm basically on target for when I go out in the field. This makes fine tuning the scope a whole lot easier. Now that I've done all the theory work, it's time to take my setup into the field and see if all this theory works out in real life. And that's exactly what I'm going to do in our next episode of Take Aim. So be sure to stay tuned. Well, this wraps up another episode of Take Aim. I'd like to thank Pyramid Air for sponsoring our channel and this series. Be sure to visit my website, www.airgunweb.com, for a list of all the items we used in this video, along with their related links. Until next time, this is Rick Usler with airgunweb.com. Thanks again for watching.